Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. Hope you're all doing great. So we're going to be turning up one of the aluminum honeycomb pen blanks. I'm super excited about this one. So let me switch to the overhead to show you the blanks. Here they, this is what we got. We're going to go for a fountain pen junior. I, to be honest, I don't even know what name this kit is. Um, I had it in my drawer. It's one of the junior variants um, and it looks pretty awesome. I'm thinking it's going to be cool. And one of the cool things about the Junior series of, of kits, you can swap out uh, the nib section. So you could go for a fountain or you can just stick a ballpoint um, or, you know, rollerball, I mean, uh, nib section in there. And so they're, you know, as long as it's the same, you know, plati plating, um, you can swap them out and you're good to go. So it's pretty sweet. So I hope, like I said, everybody's doing good today. Uh, we're still getting snow in the Sierras. It has been a pretty unprecedented uh, winter. I, I'm just going to call it, I mean, ever since December, we've been getting slammed with snow. So it's been pretty, pretty nice. Also kind of a pain. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you guys are staying warm where you're at and it's not getting too snowy or uh, crazy weather. I don't know. The weather patterns just keep getting weirder. So... Anyway, I'm pretty excited to turn this thing up. Uh, we have some blanks. Uh, the rest of the blanks are ready to rock. We did some uh, of the same ones that, that we're going to turn today. And then we also made a batch of, and I didn't clean these up uh, completely. We made a batch that had blue, kind of a greenish, uh, like the, the dark green in it, and then the gold, the 15, uh, 14 karat gold. And you can kind of see, it looks like the, the 14 karat gold kind of fell to the bottom quite a bit. So I, that's something that I really wasn't expecting, but I think there's still some gold chunks, you know, strewn throughout. It just kind of looks like it all settled. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to be using that, uh, the 14 karat nugget, I think is what it's called. Uh, 14 karat nugget gold. Which way do I turn it? Um, for my candy, um, it may be a little bit heavier uh, than, than other micas and may settle out a little bit more. Um, so in that case, you know, what you want to do is, um, you know, wait a little bit longer, um, you know, for a higher temperature before you start, you know, swirling and pouring everything together. Um, something I didn't really expect. So um, the majority of the blanks are, that are going in the subscription boxes are going to be these. There's five of those. And then I think we got like two or three other people um, still going in the, the subscription boxes. So a few people will get these, but I think they're going to turn out pretty awesome. Um, like I said, they don't look very good because I didn't um, sand and, and like, you know, like buff these up. But uh, I think they're going to turn out pretty awesome in the end. Um, that blue and the dark green, I think, is really going to be kind of a neat uh, combination. It, it's not showing through um, on the blanks right now, but I think it's going to look pretty cool. Um, so I had to do a little bit of extra, <laughs> a little extra CA glue work with these blanks for some reason. And I don't, there's a couple things that come to mind. For some reason, these things didn't, the, the adhesion wasn't as good on these blanks. And so part of the reason why I didn't clean these up is I actually doused them with CA glue, um, let it flood in into the blanks, just to give it a little bit of extra, um, you know, a little extra bond between the resin and the honeycomb. And this stuff can happen. Um, there's, like I was saying, I, there's a couple things that, that could have caused some of these issues. Number one, when you're dealing with these mixed materials like this, especially when you're dealing with something where it's not a particularly good bond. So, you know, mixed materials could be anything, resin and wood, resin and a honeycomb, um, whatever it may be. Um, but some of these things are a little bit, you know, honeycomb like metals, um, smooth surfaces, they're harder to get a bond. Um, resin doesn't just stick to stuff. It likes, it's a mechanical bond, they call it. Um, between resin and whatever you're you're casting in it or whatever, um, where it wants to grab onto things to hold onto. You know, like uh, you would want to like scuff up a really smooth surface with sandpaper so that it has something to bite into. That's a mechanical bond. And you know, when we're dealing with something like aluminum honeycomb, um, there's really no good way to get scratches in it um, or or make it a rough surface really. So. You got to deal with that stuff when you're casting these things. Um, but one of the things that really is a problem with these types of, you know, bonds, bond issues is um, heat. So, you know, whether when you're drilling or sanding or cutting, 
Um, if the blank is starting to heat up a lot more, it's going to weaken the bond even more and those, those materials will want to separate. And I think what was happening was the blade that I had on my table saw is a little bit on the dull side and I was kind of having to force the blanks through. So I'm sure that it was probably adding heat. And then the other thing is if, if it's a dull blade, um, it's kind of really putting a lot of stress on, you know, the blank and those, those joints between, you know, where the resin and the, the, the honeycomb is. So I think that's actually what caused that with these. Um, the other thing is I have a cup of acetone that I dunk stuff in and I had cleaned off quite a bit of honeycomb. I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, the aluminum honeycomb stopper blanks for, for Carl Jacobson and uh, at Ruth Niles. Um, and I had cleaned off quite a bit of honeycomb in the same acetone vat, let's say. And so, you know, that might have been another issue where the, the acetone just had some, some extra, it, it wasn't very clean. Like I, I, what I did was uh, I've, you know, dumped that old stuff and then put a fresh amount of, of acetone in there. So there's a couple of little, little tricks and things that, that maybe can help out with that bond a little bit. Um, but like I said, I think these are going to be all right. What I did, I, I could just tell because like, like little bits were kind of coming out when I was cutting them on the table saw, which indicates to me that the bond wasn't, you know, awesome. Um, and so what I did was just flood it with the, the super thin CA glue from Starbond, let it really soak down into it. And that helps out a ton. And then for these pen blanks, again, I mean, I, you can kind of see on, on the ones that I'm going to turn, I, I redid it even. Um, I, I added even more on the top when I was doing the gluing of the tubes. And so um, when I'm gluing tubes in also, the first thing I do is douse the inside of the blank with this thin CA and that's gonna you know fill in around the hole, but it's also gonna seep into any little cracks or anything that, that might be um, on the inside. And then I also even doused it on the outside. So I just wanted to let everybody know, you know, they're, they're, when you're dealing with these types of materials, there's, there's a few things that can go wrong, let's say. Um, and I'm hoping that everything stays together on these. Uh, I've done enough CA gluing that I'm not that worried about it now. But, you know, when you get blanks like this, even if you buy it from somebody that makes, you know, good blanks, I recommend just adding some CA glue <laughs> to the top just because you know you paid for these things and while if it blows up maybe that person will replace the blank for you maybe not though um, but do you really want to have to contact them and go through the hassle of, of getting another blank when you could just you know add a little ca glue and probably get through the turning so um, it just you know makes things a little bit easier if you can take some steps to add a little insurance to your blanks um, so that you can get through it with no problems so let me stop and see what's happening here there's a lot of people in here, wow. There's only about three or four people when we first started. So Mike McEwen was here first, nice. Uh, let's see here, and I tried to get, I actually was gonna get started early today, and I was about to start the stream and I'm looking and my microphone wasn't being picked up, so I had to reset the microphone. <laughs> Never on time, no matter what I try to do, even when I'm ready. Uh, let's see here, oh, the internet, oh man. No fun when the internet goes out. Uh, let's see, lots of people here, wow. Just checking to see if anybody had questions or any, anyone. Uh, so what are you guys working on? Is anybody doing anything kind of cool, anything different? Um, again, it's kind of the new year. Is anybody working on something that they haven't worked on before? Uh, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna, I got my phone up, so I'll be keeping my eye on the, the comments over there. So let's switch over to the, not that view, this view. I'm gonna bring my bottle of CA glue just in case we run into some issues. Um, so, you know, and I was mentioning that my saw blade was a little bit dull. Unfortunately, the, the problem is, you know, I, I should have just switched it out, but the problem is, you know, it's, it wasn't like toast, like it's still working and I just didn't want to have to switch it out, you know? Um, so what we have here is a dead center. We're going to be doing the, the between center bushings. Um, I don't use mandrels. Um, I use the, the TBC setup, and so you got a dead center with a 60 degree cone on it, that's gonna drive the blank. And then on the other end, I gotta switch it out here. Oops, camera in the way. You got a live center on the tailstock side, and it spins freely with another 60 degree cone on it. And let's see here, let's start with the cap portion. 
put that guy on there. Get this thing ready. And let's see here. I'm going to turn on my phone so I can see what's happening here. Oh, and uh, real quick, I was going to put a link to the... There's a link in the description already, but if anybody wants to uh, pick up aluminum honeycomb to make your own blanks, I sell it on my website. We're stocked up. We got tons, so... We're, oh, working on a chef knife. That's awesome. That is a project that I would like to do sometime, is have you know a blacksmith actually make you know blades for me and uh and make my wife some knives that's a cool project because everybody gets to use those <laughs> not just a, a gift for someone else like we all you know we all use knives we have these we have a set of knives and they just aren't really comfortable in my hand and we've had them for a while they're kind of like the disposable ones not very awesome so i want to make my own with some handles that'd be cool someday Let me get my phone. <laughs> You're watching YouTube. Steve's watching YouTube today. <laughs> but that's not new. William's here. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my dust collector. I'm going to be using a negative rate cutter on an easy wood tool handle. I think this is a new cutter too, so that's nice. So anyway, like I was saying, I'm, I was mentioning uh, the, the blades. You know, dull blades on your cutting tools not awesome now one, one thing that will let me let me turn this off because i feel like i'm yelling um one thing that will be a lot easier on your blanks if you're making like a brick of them and you need to cut them out an easier way to go and i'm i'm seriously considering just switching to this um go with a bandsaw that's going to be a little bit less uh it's going to put less force you know it's not it's not cutting and slashing through as much so i think for like a, a honeycomb blank i think your your bandsaw it's a thinner blade and, uh, and, I, and it's just putting pressure down, um, which is a little bit less stress than kind of coming in, you know, from the, and, and kind of, I don't know, I think a table saw is a little bit harsher on, on a, a brick of blanks like this with this kind of material in it. So I might actually just switch over to the bandsaw. One of the reasons I don't use the bandsaw is because my table saw leaves a cleaner cut, but you know, if I got to go through and, and do a bunch of extra work on it, I got to sand it and do all that anyway. So. Um, I think you're better off just starting off with a bandsaw in the first place, probably. All right, so fresh, fresh cutter, fresh safety glasses, high speeds, and light cuts, and hopefully this thing will stay together. So far, so good. But um, I think the, the hardest part about turning these things, where, where you, you're probably, there's two times where it's going to be the worst <laughs> um, part of turning this. And, and it's going to be when you're knocking the corners off because there's a lot of force being applied. It's kind of just slapping the, the, the cutter, you know? And uh, that's quite a bit of force being exuded onto the, the joints in there. So, you know, be take your time when you're getting the, the corners cut off. You can even just sand the corners down. That'll kind of help out a little bit. Um, and then the other time is at the very end when there's just very little material left. Um, a lot of times you'll get little chip outs and stuff with these kind of blanks. So um, usually the middle part of the turning is not as bad, I don't, I find. I'm gonna be careful because I really I want to make sure that I get through this this blank. I don't have a, a spare or anything. And you can always add even more CA glue as you go. 
just to kind of try and keep all the parts and stuff together. I'm being a little bit overly cautious on this because I really haven't ever had a blank come apart completely on me with these, but like I said, I, I could notice when I was just cutting these and doing that that there was these ones were a little bit less <laughs> less awesome of a, a a bond between the resin and the um, resin and the honeycomb. But I think again, it was my fault. I don't think it's not typical, basically. Let's see, who is here? Is Brian here? Hey, Brian's here. What's up, man? Oh, spring seal. Oh. David just finished a dyed pizza cutter. That's fun. Oh, your garage is cold. No. It's no fun working in freezing temperatures at all. A couple of years ago, our, our heater went out in the shop and it, man, and it was out forever because we weren't sure whose responsibility it was, whether it was like ours or the landlord. <laughs> and so nothing happened and we couldn't even get a hold of the landlord anyway. That was awesome. Um, so we dealt with it for like a month and a half or two months in the winter. Luckily our shop actually, well, it wasn't that cold of a winter or, or at that time. Like this winter, this year, we would have been hosed if our heater went out. Although, I don't know, it did get pretty cold, but we, we were using a propane heater to get things kind of warmed back up. But it ain't fun. <laughs> you can hear <laughs> she's doing stuff she's not supposed to be doing. That's funny. Uh, one thing I do want to make uh, that I want to point out is, you know, a lot of us pen turners, turners in general, a lot of times we'll tend to want to stick our hand, you know, like feel the blank as, as either while it's turning or as it's coming to a, a stop. And I, I really recommend to try and resist the urge to touch the blank when it's spinning, when you got metal in there, because if, if there's a little piece kind of sticking out, it's going to really rip your finger up. So try to avoid, avoid the urge. Wait till it comes to a complete stop and... Keep the band-aids in the band-aid drawer. I didn't catch the, the Saturday morning cartoons today. Mark's working on a mold. Mark's always doing something. You're always doing something fun. That's cool. Um, I'm gonna just, like I said, I'm being extremely cautious on this blank, uh, or this pen, both of them, uh, today. 
And so what I'm going to do, we're kind of, you know, I told you we're about, we're starting to get close to that, you know, to the end, let's say. And this is a, this is a great time, great opportunity to just give this a quick dousing um, of thin CA glue. Just, just to add a little extra, especially on those ends, you know, where it gets really thin. Um, adding a little bit of this super thin CA just adds a little bit of extra. If there are any areas, you know, where, where the, the bond between the aluminum honeycomb and the resin is not good, there's a little gap or something, it's just weak, um, adding that CA glue, that stuff, the super thin stuff will work its way into pretty much any little tiny crevice. So it just kind of adds a little bit of insurance and it's not going to work in every single circumstance. If you got massive problems going on, it's not going to, you know, solve everything. But I find that it helps out quite a bit, and I and I think it's the reason why I've gotten through. Because I've I've turned a lot of things that really I'm going into it. I'm like face mask. This is going to blow up in my face. You know, <laughs> like it really should. But because I, you know, take certain precautions, I get through a lot of things that are a little bit more problematic sometimes. Oh, the chat froze? Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I know. We're just getting dumped on. <laughs> on the West Coast. I've, I haven't seen this much snow just continually all winter, like from December through January. And I don't know. I, don't, I can't even remember the last time. we had that. It's good because I like snowboarding, but it's also pretty soggy here too. I actually got to go snowboarding finally on Thursday. And it was a good day. It's really wet snow, though, I'll tell you that. They refer to the, the snow that falls in the Sierras here, Sierra cement. It's like, compared to Colorado, um, it's a much drier snow. I think it's because of the colder temperatures. Um, and so, but man, this stuff is like the epitome of Sierra cement that we got right now. It's super wet. So everything's looking good so far. No, no issues. Uh, and one thing to note also, uh, you can turn this aluminum honeycomb. You can use carbide. I, I recommend going with the negative rake. It just kind of, it works pretty well. Uh, you can use the standard carbide. Um, that's not a problem either. Um, these are just a little bit less aggressive. So, you know, with the resins and stuff, it, it's really good with that kind of thing. Uh, but you can also use high-speed steel uh, to turn this stuff. Um, it's not going to be a problem. So whatever tools you have, you can turn aluminum with it. Especially how thin this stuff is, you know, it's just a really thin piece of aluminum. Now, there is going to be a little bit, you'll, you'll feel it. it it's going to feel a little different. It's like a harder you know, kind of more abrasive surface than, than the resin is. Um, and so for the negative rakes, it'll maybe bounce a little bit. You'll get a little bit of bumpiness that you'll feel. Um, but, you know, just kind of go back over it and clean it up and everything's good. Um, with the more aggressive cuts, cutters, you know, the normal standard cutters, it'll probably handle it better, but you run more risk of it tearing stuff out with the standard cutters. You know, it'll it'll cut it, shear it pretty well, but you can also rip stuff out if you're not careful. A little bit easier than the negative rakes. All right, we're getting pretty close now.
to stop and look at this, see what the see what the, the profile's looking like, check out the ends. I'm gonna be putting a CA finish on top of this as well, just to keep everything protected. Um, it'll be easier to kind of polish up and get a nice even sheen across you know both the materials. We want to make sure that we're good to go on the ends. looking pretty nice. Okay. Let's get you guys in a little closer here. Straight on sideways. Looking nice. All right, we made it through without any explosions. So that's always good. And now it's time to do a little bit of sanding. So I took one little quick pass, one last really light pass. So I've cleaned it up pretty well. I think we can start at 400 grit. I don't think that's gonna be too tall in order there. The higher the grit that you can start at, if you can get it nice and smooth off the tool, um, you know, one, it's just less work that you gotta do, you know, with the sanding, but it's also just a little bit easier because you have less, you know, coarse grits to sand out. And it just, sometimes it's easy to miss some stuff. So the higher you can start with your sandpaper, the better off you're gonna be going to make your life a lot easier. Jamie Page, what's up, dude? I wasn't paying attention to the chat. Jamie snuck in. Well, that's cool. Um, online symposium, nice, that's awesome. Sunny and 52. Yeah, it's, it's a little chilly outside here. Maybe, we might be around 35, 40, but I think it might, I don't know if it's snowing yet or not. I know it's snowing in the mountains right now. Which is great, because I'm going snowboarding next week too. Just keep it coming. It's just not a huge, giant dump all at once. I don't like that. I'll take a foot of powder a week, preferably if it would just dump it on Wednesday night. That would be great. So that it's ready for me on Thursday. I got a couple little tool marks. I, I actually think I'm going to drop down to 240 real quick. They just aren't coming out with the 400, so. 
rather than sit there and spin my wheels. I think I'm better off dropping a grit. Getting these pesky tool marks out. do a little bit of sanding you know in the opposite direction basically it just kind of the way that I think about it this is a solid surface and if all the scratches are going in one direction your sand grits can kind of get stuck in those those ruts and so by doing it this way you're gonna kind of ensure that the entire surface is being sanded it's kind of a cross grid you know cross hatching of, of sand marks um, but the other advantage to doing that is, you know, so I've done both ways. Now when I come back and move back up to 400 grit going around this way, if there are any scratches going the opposite direction, I know that I haven't sanded enough. So it's kind of a, a little, it'll tell you when you're done sanding with each grit, when you've gotten the previous grit scratches out. Let's see here. That's it, I'm moving to Florida. You caught him at the door? <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I like to uh, uh, also wipe off with a little bit of denatured alcohol in between grits too, just to make sure I've gotten you know, all the little grit particles and dust off of there. And you can wet sand the whole way through if you want. That's a, actually a pretty decent way to go. The, my problem is I don't really want to get this wet right now. I'm going to be putting a CA finish on. And I also, another thing you can do, instead of wet sanding, you could use like wax or, or different things. The problem is though, if you're going to be putting a finish on, you don't want to be using oils and waxes and things. But that's not a bad way to sand. Um, Carl Jacobson's been doing that with wood forever. Um, he uses the the... It's like an oil, oil wax mixture thing, um, just on sandpaper, and that re kills the dust. And the you know you know you don't have that sanding dust coming off. Anything that'll hold that on adds a little lubrication. So that's not a bad way to go either. Um, I'm just a little bit like I said, when there's finishes involved, I don't really want to be messing with that. Water's okay, but I, I don't like having to clean up and clean it off every time. In between. So I just dry sand up to 400 grit and then I switch to wet sanding from there on. All right, I got a fresh piece of 400 grit here. I think, yeah, Thursday should be good. Actually, we're, we're supposed to get some Tuesday to Wednesday um, up in the mountains. I think it's going to be a light, very light dusting, but I'm hoping that it just gives a, a little fresher, you know, dro drops a little bit of freshy on the, on the mountains, and then Thursday is going to be a great day up there. I think we're supposed to be getting a decent amount up in Tahoe today, maybe a foot or something like that. I like to just kind of wipe it off and look, and like I said, I'm looking for any um, scratches going lengthwise. I don't really see any. Just give this like a couple seconds here more, the 400 this way. And then I'm going to do again 
We'll go lengthwise. looking pretty good uh, I like to just hit it I have this 500 grit pad I like to just kind of give it a little bit with that just you can kind of get in fill in areas it's a kind of a non-aggressive 500 just to kind of top it off and then I'm gonna once again hit it with some denatured alcohol before we put our CA finish on clean all the any dust or anything off of there get everything nice and clean man that's looking pretty good I'm, I'm pretty happy with that good colors I like that red and red and purple uh, and we also have a little bit of silver in there which kind of gets well, you know, it's, it's poking out here and there we got some silver swirls there and there it's a really nice combination of colors Good, good choices on the color combo. So my first step, I'm gonna again, I'm gonna hit it with some of that super thin. Just gonna give it a, a quick coat of that, just to just in case. I I don't see any areas where there's issues, but it's not a bad idea. And this time, I'm just gonna feed it onto the the, the rag. And just give it a thin coat to kind of as, as like a base coat, just to. Like I said, if there are any areas where you want it to kind of seep in, it'll take care of that. And then I, for, for the actual top coat finish, I like to use the uh, Mercury's Thin Flex. Um, it just, the, it looks pretty good, it sands well, but it's also, the, the flex part, um, it's not as like brittle as some of the CA's, CA glues. And so if there are any kind of temperature changes or, you know, things that could make it expand or even if you drop it, it's just not going to be as prone to like crack um, as some of the harder finishes are. Hey, Mark. Chatland. Oh, you fell on Christmas Eve. My dad did a couple years ago. Had surgery. Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That is no fun. All right, and so I just let that dry. I didn't use any accelerator. And now we're just going to apply a little bit of CA. Oh, something came off on there. I don't know what that was. Something was flipping around on there. Hopefully I got it off. <clears throat> uh, and then this one you, you do want to actually use. It's meant to be used with the, the accelerator. So I give it a good coating with the accelerator. And it's already looking pretty fabulous. Oh, we got something funky in there. Bit of a fuzz or something. All right, I got that out of there. I don't know what that was. Must have been something on the paper towel, I guess. I'm gonna get a new one. Ah, that's probably why. Came off from my shirt. So we got one coat on. I'm going to probably put about four or five. TLF, what's up? Oh, the patella tendon. 
Yeah, I made a mistake. So I tore my ACL. This is many years ago, like 20 years ago now, but tore my ACL playing basketball, and I opted to have them take part of my patellar tendon out to use as the ACL replacements instead of going with a cadaver ACL. And that was the worst decision of my life. I've had nothing but problems with my patellar tendon ever since. The ACL is fine, I think, but I have knee problems in that knee and it's, I think, caused by them cutting my, <laughs> cutting a perfectly good patellar tendon up. I was worried though, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want somebody else's ACL in me. I'd be haunted, spooked, it'd be a ghost in my knee. It'd be making me dance all the time. So I think we got like three, maybe four coats on at this point. I've run out of paper towel, so we're going to call it good. And then I would recommend, you know, letting this sit for like 30 minutes, an hour. Um, it's it's going to harden up even more. You can get away with it. I do it all the time on the streams and it's they turn out fine, but I think it's just going to give you the best, you know, when, once it's really hardened up, it's going to be, it'll sand a little bit easier for you. It'll be harder. Um, so that's what I would recommend when you're doing the finishing. But, you know, it's not that big of a deal either to, to just move forward. <clears throat> if you're in a hurry, you can get away with it, but... Alright, so I'm just going to kind of lightly hit this with some 400. Just to kind of knock down ridges. The game with CA finishes is to get it on as smooth as possible with, with as few ridges and stuff, you know, brush strokes almost is what you're kind of putting in there. So I just like to knock them down with this 400. That's a little bit on the more aggressive side. So it just cuts it kind of quick. You don't have to do a lot of sanding. I'm barely pressing on it. And that just knocks down you know, the ridge is a little bit. I'm going to give it a little bit more. We want our, we want the surface to be as smooth as possible. That'll give you the best gloss. All right, and then from there, we're just going to move up to uh, wet sanding. Actually, I need to get a new cup of water. This thing's been sitting here for. I don't know how many weeks. Put down a cover over the bed. You can turn off the the dust collector now. If it'll work with me. Oh, thanks, Donna. Yeah, it was good. Good color choices by the by the chat. So let me go replace the water. Um, and, and one thing that I actually I wanted to kind of mention, uh, you know, so we just bought a new TV and it's it's like you know a flat screen and all that. And we were kind of looking to just kind of double checking how you clean it. How do you you know wash it off? And if you're not familiar, you know, with these flat screen TVs, they recommend just using like a, a brace cloth, just dust it off. And then if you, if there's like, you know, grease smudges or, you know, something else where you, you need a little bit more than just wiping it with, with a dry cloth, um, usually they recommend microfiber towels for that. 
um, then they say to, to add water, but they recommend d uh, distilled water, which I thought was interesting. And basically the reason for that is they don't want you using tap water because it has sometimes has stuff in it, minerals and things that can scratch the screen. And I was thinking about it like, you know, <laughs> if you've got hard water, that means you've got minerals and junk in your water. And uh, you might want to actually use distilled water. Like if you, if you really want to work, you know, I can get a really good gloss on these, these pens and stuff, but there's something to be said for distilled water even on this if you're going for something really glossy, you know. Um, I don't know, maybe a TV screen is a little bit more of a big deal than, <laughs> you know, more important than a pen, but it could be something to, to look into, especially if you find that you keep getting scratches, like you just cannot get scratches out. Maybe it's the water, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think about that? It, just something I ran across and... Like I said, I've been using our tap water, which is definitely hard water um, up here for a long time, but I don't know. I might try some distilled water, see if it changes anything. Um, yeah, I've, I actually sell a Joker blank, and I'm actually going to be coming out with a new version of the Joker blank um, in a, like a vertical pour. So right now the ver the Joker blank it's it's purple and green, um, but it's in like the, the same like the team colors like the solid colors. Um, but I'm going to be coming out with sometime this year um, a mica powder version that you pour vertically. So they're round blanks basically is what that means. But yeah, you can totally do that. And so this is Zona paper. It's a polishing paper. The green is the first step. I only use the, the green and the, the gray usually, sometimes the blue. So the first three steps, I think it's like a five or six step total. Uh, but it's basically the same thing as Micromesh, just cheaper. Works great. Less steps and it does the same job. So that's nice too. Move on to the, the gray one. And why not? We'll do the blue too. It sounds like a good idea. Yeah, ours ours does too. It's it's pretty bad. Especially at the shop. There's it's uh I don't I don't I will not drink the tap water out of here. I don't know what's going on. This building's like a hundred years old or <laughs> who knows what. Um pretty pretty old. And uh, I just don't really trust it, so I don't know. Distilled water might be might be something to think about. And then you know, an another one is uh, you know pa paper towels. They they do not want you to use paper towels wiping a, a screen off because they'll scratch it. You know, and I'm I'm doing that right now, but. Something to think about. Everything is kind of abrasive in some way or, or another, you know? Um, so, and again, I, I think, like, I don't necessarily, I don't get bad results or anything, so it's not like it's a must, but if you just find that you're, you struggle with trying to get things, you know, get the scratches out, or, you know, you think it's perfect and then you get it done and then you're wiping it off, you know, or something, and, and there's like scratches again, and you know, maybe maybe it is the the paper towel that you're using, or the the water, possibly even. All right, so we're gonna move on to magic juice, and something that, I, and I was actually just talking to Chad about this today. 
I gotta be honest, guys. I don't know that I really see the benefit of doing all six steps of this stuff. I find that the first three, it's like, it doesn't, not much changes between three, four, five, you know, it, it, it's, so we're just going to stop after three and inspect it and, and take a look. Um, I actually did that on a couple other projects and it seemed perfectly fine to me. Um, but I don't know. I just thought, you know, sometimes you don't even necessarily need to do all the steps. Um, so one thing that I do is I, I like to, I think that this paper towel is a little bit softer. It's less abrasive. Um, and so I've kind of switched to that when I'm doing the actual magic juice, um, you know, polishing. Actually, let me get my, I like to keep my cover underneath the pen here while I'm doing the polishes. Tap water was yellow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, reverse osmosis. Oh, one thing that's cool also is the magic juice. So, you know, right now they have this is this is a, a I don't know fairly an older set that I have. Um, they came out with the the caps that don't have like separate like the tips. Let's say that don't have separate um, caps on them. They're like the the Illumilite dyes and the Divine Pigment bottles where you just this isn't one of them. This is a dye, but it's the same cap now they, they came out with new caps on the magic juice bottles and i think that's going to be great for something like polish sometimes with the dyes even these things are kind of a pain they're, they're a little messy but i think rather than having a separate cap like this um, i always drop it lose it <laughs> you know, it's gonna be nice uh, on the new bottle i just put an order in for some new uh, magic juice replacements I'm, I'm looking forward to getting those new trying out the new caps tips whatever you want to call it all right so here we go we're gonna add a little bit of this a little bit low Gotta shake it out shake 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 it out okay and this stuff is great you just wipe it on you don't have to change over anything on the lathe go about 2000 rpms just rub it in for you know 15 20 seconds or so I mean, even after just the first step, I could walk away from this thing and it's it's pretty darn good. It changes it drastically, just, just applying the first step of magic juice. And I like to get a clean spot, swipe off any excess. Step one done. So let's stop it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on this isn't the greatest lighting or shot necessarily but I mean look at that I, I mean that's better than a lot of people's pens that I've seen that actually do a lot of polishing <laughs> that's just step one and it gets better from there oh oh I dropped my second step let's zoom out a little bit there. Yeah, that's another one is different water with every grit because you can get grit contamination. Um, again, I just, I don't, I haven't really seen that. Well, you know, I don't wet sand with the same, you know, I clean off between the grits when I'm dry sanding. I don't, I just don't see a whole lot of difference. I get good enough results without having to do that with the, the you know, two or three grits of, Zona paper that I use. So, but again, I mean, all of these things are, are things to try if you're having issues. You know, if you're running into stuff and you and you just can't seem to get the thing. Whoa, I don't know what it is about the second step, but it tends to do that a lot. It likes to wrap up. This is a, and that's a good reason not to use an actual like towel when you're doing polishing and stuff on a lathe because if the towel doesn't rip, it's going to drag your fingers into that thing and that ain't going to be good not at all okay let's see i'm going to take a look at this and just make sure that it didn't cause any issues yeah, it looks fine. looking good i think i might do step two one more time just because it didn't really get a whole lot of polishing effect on that because <laughs> it just got wrapped up we'll try that again i find that i have to apply a little bit more pressure 
uh, with step two to avoid it from the, the towel from like grabbing. Just it's like stickier for some reason. There may be a way to kind of thin it out or, or something. So that doesn't happen with any of the other steps. <clears throat> All right, step three. Let's, I'm going to scroll up real quick here. Yeah, well, my yeah, my water comes from the Sierras too, but I just don't trust the pipes in between <laughs> at my shop. Uh, our where we live though, we're on a well, and so that's that's that water is just fabulous. It's hard, you know, super hard, and I'm sure there's minerals. I I know there's minerals because we have to like fish rocks out of our tap sometimes. <laughs> little screen thing in the tap but uh but oh man it tastes so good all right step three Yeah, I just I don't really see a whole lot of reason to keep going to to you know on these steps. It just it's not really adding a lot. I mean that's glossy, <laughs> you know. I think that that's probably good enough. I don't know. We're gonna we're just gonna go to step three and just see how the pen looks in the end. Give it maybe I'll compare it to some of the other pens that I've made that have a CA finish on them, um, and we'll kind of do a little experiment. All right, so the next step that I'm gonna do is just something to uh, ensure that we don't have any issues of the finish cracking when we put everything together. All right, so I'm gonna take the bushings off now you know these ones this is another reason why I don't glob on a ton of CA glue is because um, if you do that your your metal bushings are gonna stick to your blank um, if that happens a lot of times I'll tap it on the the tail stock or somewhere try and kind of just crack it loose but see if we can get if I can get a shot on the edge you might see there there's there's a shot you can kind of see some little chunkies hanging off the edge maybe I don't know how, if you guys can see that or not, but either way, if you have CA glue kind of hanging off the edge, when you go to press this together, you can crack your finish. So what I do is, this is the only reason I, I have mandrels, <laughs> pen mandrels. Um, I just have a little piece of sandpaper down there. It's 240 grit. I just use a standard hole puncher um, and it fits the, the stem here. And then I just hold down, so it's, it's referencing along that you know, shaft staying square and I just lightly kind of you know cut that off so that it is it remains square but I'm getting rid of any excess CA glue that may be kind of hanging off of there any shards and this will just save you a ton of headache when I first started turning pens and you know putting CA finishes on there's nothing worse than a, you know you got this thing perfect you're assembling it and you crack the finish. <laughs> I'd say it's even worse if you get the first side on, you know, on, and then that second one. So then you got to take the the first side off, as well. And so, not very fun. I don't I don't like that. So this will just save you that that headache. And now we got you know nice clean edges. Don't have to worry about that when we're assembling it. All right. So let's zoom out a little bit. No, that's not the right way. We're gonna get the second blank set up here. And then, you know, I, there's probably a little bit of CA glue that got onto these bushings. And so I just dunk them in a, a little bottle of acetone 
Acetone will dissolve CA glue completely. So I just have, this is a, an old spice jar. <laughs> I just toss them in there. Uh, they don't even have to stay in there that long. It depends on how much CA glue is on there, but um, you know, keep them in there for like 30 minutes or so at the most. Should probably dissolve everything and you'll be good to go. All right, let's take a break, get some water, check out the comments, see what you guys are up to. Move this magic juice. Tell you what though, I am super impressed with magic juice. That stuff, it's a cheap option, it's easy, and it just works. <laughs> it produces good results. That's, exactly what, that's everything that you want in a product, you know? Ah, uh, David uses distilled water, nice. All right, so let's see here. You haven't seen a ShamWow? I know. I actually went out and specifically bought some of those things just because I was like, oh, ShamWow, that'll be kind of funny. Colorado River, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh. Right the pipe. Ugh. That's no fun. Yeah, well water's really good. Well, I guess it kind of depends maybe, but some places might have like, I don't know, if you had like sulfurs and, and like certain things, certain minerals in your in your area, it, you know, well water might not taste very good. But up here, oh, it's, it tastes fabulous. You like the fountain pens? Nice, yeah. I don't use fountain pens. I've never been a huge fan of them. Just seems like extra work. <laughs> I'm lazy, uh, but I don't know. I, I might have to try them out sometime. And like I said, this one, this one's nice. The the Junior Gent or Junior, you know, the, all the Junior series uh, kits. They all the parts are interchangeable. So. You know, you can buy like the fountain kit, but you can also get a, a rollerball nib section and just switch it out. Like you don't have to be stuck with whatever kit you bought. <clears throat> That's what I'm actually doing. The kit that I'm using is a fountain pen, um, but I have from another kit, uh, another one of the juniors is a different style kit, but they all use the same like nib components and stuff and so it, I got another chrome one so it could go either way depending on if somebody wanted to buy it all right so I think we're ready to go on this second blank I'm gonna just get this camera situated a little bit so it's not in my way maybe zoom in a little now again if, you, if you're just joining uh, when I was cutting these up I noticed and, and there's reasons for this if you want to go back and, and, and find out some of the things that I think might have caused some issues um, I was finding that the bonds in these specific blanks weren't awesome and I think it had to do with my table saw blade was a little dull and a bunch of factors I, I, I covered it at the beginning um, but I'm, I'm being kind of careful with these blanks just just to make sure and so again you know when you're knocking the corners off that's a time when you can get chip outs um, it, it's more prevalent because you're you're putting more you're exerting more force like there's it's kind of slapping the blade every time it spins around and so you know you want high speeds you know get this thing going as fast as possible and then you know take light cuts as you go and i mean if it's a blank that you absolutely cannot destroy <laughs> like you you do not want it to blow up on you I mean, go take it to the grinder and grind down the, the corners. Um, that'll kind of ease that transition. And then once you've gotten it round, you know, things are gonna go probably pretty well. Um, that's the easiest part. And then when it gets down to, you know, when, when the blank's getting down to close to the end of the turning, that's another time when it gets, it could be a little hairy. There's just not as much material there. And so you wanna be careful, you know, extra careful at that time. Uh, and then CA glue is always your friend. Um, you know, hit it with some CA glue just to help reinforce some of those, those you know, joints between the resin and, and in this case, honeycomb. But if you're dealing with materials in your resin that may not have the greatest bond, you know, just, just take it easy, be careful, and, and you should be able to get through it, no problem. But CA glue, I'm telling you, is the secret. <laughs> and I use this stuff, the, the Star Bond super thin I, I don't think it really matters what brand necessarily but you definitely want like this the thinnest viscosity 
and this is just one that works for me for sure i've been using it for years so let's get this thing the second one going hopefully we'll get through this one with no problems and then we'll be good to go yeah it's because yeah resin doesn't like smooth surfaces um, of any kind <clears throat> so whenever you're dealing with a material like that just just be cautious take your time be go easy on it Yeah, what are you up to, Doug? <clears throat> You've been pretty busy putting out some cool projects. How is your weather? Are you getting snow over there in Michigan? We've been getting dumped on here. Right, so everything's looking good so far. This blank specifically, actually, these two chunks can't kind of came out right here. These, these little bits, so. I'm actually just waiting for those things to come loose because I just kind of glued them back in. Not going to be a problem in the end of the blank, but... Like I said, I'm being extra cautious on these. Especially now, I got through one of them. I don't want the second one to blow up. <laughs> so I'm just kind of taking my time, making sure that I'm not, hopefully not getting any chip outs. The one other issue is I actually, my I, I drilled this thing off center. I don't know what the deal is. I cannot get my drill press lined up in the center of a pen blank for some reason. Um, but, uh, so it's a little bit off center anyway, but um, I would recommend I think the easiest way to go, my, my table saw blade was pretty dull. It wasn't totally gone, that's why I kept going with it, but you know, dull blades are gonna heat up your blank and that's gonna affect that bond. And so I think that's what happened with these blanks. They just, there was a few chip outs and things that, I, that were uncommon um, with the honeycomb that I used. So I think it was that blade, but I think if you use a bandsaw, I think you're gonna get a lot less, you know, you'll have a lot less problems. It's not gonna heat up the blanks, it's a thinner blade and it's not exerting as much force, pressure, on the material. It's just pushing straight down. So I think that that's a better way to go. The reason I use the table saw is because it leaves a, a cleaner cut, cleaner surface on the end, and I don't have to mess around. They look good. <clears throat> but one disadvantage for me with the table saw is I have a saw stop, and if I cut into these blanks with the with the metal in them it'll blow the brake so that's not good I've done that a few times 
so I got to turn the brake off anyway. And then if, if you know, if you have to do extra work and, you know, like I, I doused the, the blanks with CA glue um, right off the bat once they were cut, just to add a little bit of support, you know, and stay, kind of stabilize the, the, the insides, the joints in between. Uh, but I think that you're better off just going with a bandsaw with bl blanks like this. No snow, really. We're, we're getting all your, your cool temperatures and snow out here. It's been pretty pretty crazy winter out here. Very wet. And actually, uh, one one little tip uh, that I can also share, uh, especially for like pen blanks, if you're doing something with a material, if you, if you're making the blank or if you you know you're cutting when you're cutting the blanks, if you can cut them in such a way where you got resin only on the ends, which that just kind of happened to work out on this one. There's a little bit of honeycomb at this end, but. If you can have just resin at the ends, I think that you're gonna be a lot safer from blowouts if that material is kind of centered, you know, and surrounded by, by resin um, on those ends of it. That can kind of help out a little bit. It'll keep you from, you know, some issues, I think. Anything you can do to just kind of stack the cards in your favor, uh, you know, is a good, good idea. So I'm just feeling this and I can feel some little edges here and there. I think that piece is that chunk. That is one of the, these are the two chunks that I think I glued back in. Might've been those ones, but I, I can feel the surface is not awesome. I'm actually going to just stop right now and just hit it with some more CA glue. Just for the heck of it. <clears throat> And I'll just let that kind of work itself into any cracks, crevices, any, any issues. And hopefully it'll just kind of help ensure that I get through this without any explosions. Oh wow, the ground's not frozen? Sheesh. Yeah. I don't think pen videos in general are <laughs> the most popular videos on YouTube. You gotta make a bowl and put resin in there with some wood. <laughs> I think those are the most popular ones. All right, so speed back up. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna, really quick, I'm gonna douse this with some kind of let that soak in. It should be totally dry, but I'm just going to hit it with some accelerator just so I don't, if there are any parts that are still liquid, it can kind of come flying off and get all over your tool rest and that's just not fun.
And again, resist the urge to be touching the blank when it's still spinning. It's tough. But if there are any little bits that are sticking out, any metal pieces, it'll, it'll cut you up pretty good. Even plastic pieces that are kind of sticking out, it, it's just not going to be... It's not a good idea. It, it can give you a nice, nice gash on your finger real quickly. We got a chunk. I knew that one didn't didn't want to stay in there. There's a couple of these pieces that just don't want to stay. But I think we can kind of turn that away for the most part and repair it. I don't know if you guys did you guys see that. We might be able to find that piece and glue it back in. Even that's another way to to kind of fix that. Might be kind of tough to get. Let me see if I can find that chunk. It hit me, so it's on the ground here somewhere. Hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of pieces of things that look like that on the ground here. <laughs> I think we'll just keep going and I'll, I'll come up with a fix for it. another piece man I have to do some repairs like I said I can't really I don't know where those things went it's not they're like super tiny pieces of plastic and I got a lot of little plastic oh I actually found one of them I think we can fix one of them this is probably that second one if you can find the piece then it, it's not that big of a deal you can just glue it back in That should work fine. I don't even think we'll... I don't even think anyone will see it. Is it focusing on it? Okay. Just add a little CA glue. That's the wrong way. Glued it to my finger. Yeah. That didn't work out so good. I don't know how I flipped that thing. Got it upside down though.
These things happen. Give it a little bit of accelerator, and then we'll move back. Hopefully it won't come back out again. glue to the rescue <laughs> oh I know it always happens in your life an 80 grit gouge <laughs> that is the way to do it I mean there's nothing wrong with it I'm telling you I think I can get through this one like I said there's a couple chips and it, it, it's actually not a bad that's fine with me um, I'm glad I could kind of show you guys how to you know just just if you can find the piece See, which piece was it? Was it this one? I mean, I can't even tell. This one, maybe. You can't really even tell, you know? So if you can find the piece and get it back in there, you're good to go. This one, I, I don't know where that piece went. And I've been turning it now, so I, I can't do much uh, to it. But we can kind of fill that in with a little bit of CA glue and, and just kind of like add a little bit of mica powder to it. We'll, we'll we'll try to give that a fix as well. See where we're at here another thing depending on where you know if something like that happened if it was like up here you might be able to cover it with the, the clip you know so there's there's a couple things ways that you can kind of get around these things with pens I think everything else is all right just kind of feeling this um, I think I am going to douse it with some more CA glue real quick just to kind of, there's a couple areas where I can kind of feel a little bit of a ridge. So if we can, I don't know, just try to stack the cards in our favor a little bit here. Always tends to, to explode at the end. Just because there's less for it to grab onto and you got thinner parts. We're just going to CA glue. I'm telling you, CA glue is the pen turner's best friend. It's like duct tape to MacGyver. Yeah, Kim said it. Yep, it's the duct tape to turn. Yeah, there's another piece. I couldn't find it. I got tons of, I mean, trying to find a, a piece of plastic in this. <laughs> and it was a pretty small one. I mean, it's just it's just a bunch of tiny little pieces of plastic on my mat. So I just, I couldn't find it. I looked, but like I said, it, it, it gives us the opportunity to kind of, you know, try, try to kind of fix it 
a, a slightly different way. If you can't find the piece or it doesn't fit or, you know, who knows what. This will give you another, another way to deal with it. But I'm going to wait until we actually get this thing, you know, like down to the bottom. And I mean, there's not a whole lot of problem leaving this the way it is. And I mean, in fact, it's, it, I may end up turning this away, actually. I could turn this down even further and it might, for the most part, actually just go away. Not even needing any fill. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Yeah, when there's a will, definitely. I know. Almost gone. Not yet. We're exposing a little bit of CA glue here, so I'm gonna just hit it with some accelerator. Make sure that's all dried down in there. A little bit more to take off on this end. This side's pretty good. And I can maybe, I got a little bit of material to take away in the middle. The problem is we're starting to get down, you know, like I said, the thinner you go, the more problems you end up having. David, have a good one. Enjoy the dinner. Almost got that taken down. So I don't even think we're going to need to fill it. I think I can get rid of that completely. This is close. I think we're pretty good. I'm a little worried though. I can feel some areas that don't feel very stable. pass I'm gonna say it
Whew, I made it through. Even though I doomed myself. Had a little sea igloo on the, the cutter there. All right, I'm gonna just start with 240 grit because I think that there's some tool marks here and there. So let's see where we're at here. Dave's here, what's up, man? Happy New Year. I don't think I've seen you this year yet. Yeah, I know, the, the last, last pass. I'll just take one more cut. It gets you every time. So that, that's that spot that, I mean, I could maybe do something there, but I, I think it's fine. You can't feel anything. It's just kind of an ex, a, a bigger piece of metal in there, so I, it's fine. It's, it's, well, there's maybe a little bump. When I put the CA finish on, it'll, it'll fill that in. Standing. I think we made it through though. I was a little worried about this one. I think we made it through. <clears throat> All right, so we got it sanded to 240. I'm gonna wipe it off with a little denatured alcohol. And we'll move up to the 400 grit. Yeah, I hit, hit it with a purple Sharpie. That, I might try that. I don't know if I have a purple Sharpie. Quick little, little hit with the, this is a 500 grit pad. Probably sands more like a 600 or so. Um, just because, like, compared to like a the Abernet, it's probably more like a 600 Abernet because it's a little bit softer. And then I'm going to wipe off. We'll give it one more hit with the denatured alcohol before we put our finish on. That's looking pretty good, though. I mean, here, here's another thing. I mean, I, I got to be honest. I could just sit here with this thing without even putting a finish on. Having it kind of be, 
you know, dull looking like a mat. That's actually pretty pretty cool looking right right there. And I don't think that's going to be a problem. It doesn't really stick out. Um, so just kind of going off of that, the matte finish thing, you know, you don't always have to make a pen glossy. You know, you can sand it up to like a thousand grit, maybe two thousand grit, and uh, and you got kind of a, a matte finish on your, your resin pens, and that's good enough. I mean, you know, you, you don't have to make it glossy all the time. Just uh, some, you know, different something to think about. A little bit, a little bit different idea. Uh, I think most of us are always talking about, you know, we got to get it polished up and, and glossy and all this. Eh, not always, you know. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit it with the thin. This time I'm going to apply it with the, you know, with the rag. Just give it a little bit of a base coat. That'll kind of soak into any you know, cracks or things going on. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the eighth inch, um, I had to discount. I have a few panels left, but I had to discontinue buying that. This stuff went up in price so much over the pandemic, uh, and obviously it's not going to go down, um, that it was I had to make a choice whether to either stop carrying honeycomb all come all together or get rid of that one because the, the the eighth inch cell is more expensive it's the most expensive panel um, um, so if I got rid of that and then bought more of the other two I could it was it was close though <laughs> it was pretty expensive kind of hurt the credit card was like oh So I ended up having to get rid of that one. But the other stuff is more, um, most people like the, the quarter inch cell more anyway. So, unfortunately. All right, so let's get some, uh, so I like to use that thin stuff for the first coat and then I switch over to the Mercury Thin Flex for my finish, let's call it, the top coat. Apply it lightly, let it spin for a second, and then again with the Thin Flex, with the Flex series, either Thin Flex or Medium Flex from Mercury, you want to actually, it's, you know, it's not just a recommendation, it, 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 it's supposed to work with the, the uh, accelerator, otherwise it, it doesn't cure as well. So it's, it's, it's something that you're going to want to do, plus it just makes things go faster anyway, but it is it is actually meant to be used with accelerator <laughs> you do have to make it glossy well if you have to you have to but you know it really isn't mandatory In some cases, it may not look good if it was, you know, a matte or a, a satin kind of finish, but in some cases, you'd be kind of surprised that, you know, it's just not really necessary. Once you kind of clean it up, you know, a lot of times you don't notice how it looks when you're sanding. You don't really pay attention at, you know, after you hit it with a thousand grit. Um, but if you kind of wipe it off with some alcohol or you know, clean it up, you might be kind of surprised at how good it looks with a mat. Oh no, the earbuds are dying. All right, William, have a good one. Oh man. All right, Scott, have a good one. I probably missed you, sorry about that, but have a good one, man.
All right, we'll give it a couple more coats, maybe one more. Don't have a whole lot of paper towel left. I like to leave my dust collector going when I'm putting finishes on because it sucks the finish, the CA smell away from me. Uh, another thing that it does actually is it, it also sucks any like little dust particles away, hopefully away from the blank. It just seems to, to keep things cleaner. When I, I, anytime I turn it off and apply a CA finish, it just seems like a bunch of dust ends up falling into the, you know, getting in there. I just don't really see that when I have the dust collector on. So it's something to think about. If you have a dust collector and you usually turn it off, you might turn it on and see how it how what you know how it goes basically. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. Still got a little bit of a there's a little bit of a bump right there, I think. So I think what I'm going to do, let's see, I should have filled that first, it would have been easier. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is we're just going to pull out some thick, I'm just going to blob a dot. Doesn't really need a whole lot, but... I'm just going to kind of blob that on there. Might have to do a couple coats of this, and then I'll just kind of sand it out. Just so there's not a little, I don't want you to be able to feel a little indentation there, even if it is tiny. Switch to 240. Now there's kind of a bump. this I'm actually gonna add some more coats on top of that I might have kind of sanded through my finish I can still kind of feel a little bit of a bump there so we want to fix that I it would have been smarter to fill that before I did the finish just so I could kind of work on it sand it and not have to worry about messing up my finish basically we're going to have to just sand this. Now it's nice and smooth, so let's go back to the 400. I'm 
I'm gonna sand the whole blank again real quick. And you can see, I, I sanded through the finish right there. So we're gonna have to reload it and uh, redo our finish, but that's okay. It's only a few coats, no big deal. So let's pull out the thin flex again. Uh, I know, but this is the, the body of the pen. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't hide it. It's a, a two-piecer. Need some more uh, accelerator. Shoot, it's already running low. Should buy a case of that stuff. sure does look good though. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. <clears throat> I'm just glad it didn't give me any more fits. <laughs> this was enough, you know, I, I could handle the a chip out here and there. And, and honestly, this, you know, this is what usually happens with the honeycomb. You get like a chip out. Like when, when people run into problems, it's usually not like a, it doesn't blow up on you. It, you just get a chip out usually is kind of what I find at least with the honeycomb that I sell in the in my blanks uh, you know you get a little chip out but hopefully you can find the little piece glue it back in and everything's fine you know it's not really that big of a deal it's it's fairly rare for the like the entire blank just to fail or like totally come apart um, and especially if you're using the if you're hitting it with CA glue doubt you know dousing it then, I mean, that's just probably not going to happen. <clears throat> yeah, this is the mercury stuff. Um, I like Starbond. Um, I don't like the Starbond accelerator, particularly. I like the mercury a lot better, um, and I use it for all CA glues. Um, it's it's like more um, I don't know. It just it it seems to be like the least aggressive. Doesn't 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 accelerate it super fast. <laughs> let's say, and it works with any CA glue. So I, I like this stuff with the mercury, and I use it for accelerating anything. Um, the Starbond, I do like Starbond glues. I like their super fast thin. I like the thick. Um, and a couple other ones that they have. I, I, I use their black one. The dyed black one. So I think I'll give it one more coat. And it's probably plenty. And then we'll uh, 
finish the finish. All right, so again, I'm gonna just kind of knock down the ridges with the 400 grit. Maybe give it that a, a couple seconds. Oh, it does? Huh. <laughs> yeah, Starbun's not gonna send me the mercury. <laughs> I'm just happy that Turner's Warehouse carries it because there I get my I get my you know I being pretty close to Phoenix I get orders from Turner's really really fast like sometimes it's like a couple days from the day I order it I get it in hand not in the winter um, the, just the shipping companies take longer the weather and all that but actually that stuff being an aerosol is probably a ground shipment though so it might take a little bit longer although I don't know I mean even ground I just ordered liquid diamonds which they have to ship ground and uh, I think they did anyway I don't know. it only took like three days to get So just getting rid of the ridges with the 400 grit. And then we'll switch to the wet sanding. I can turn this dust collector off, which is wonderful. Ah. Nice. Nice and quiet. Okay. And the first one. is the zone of green. Uh, another thing that you can try also is um, if you got the CA finish on fairly smooth, a lot of times you can just start with the, the Zona and not even fuss with the, uh, you know, the 400 grit. I probably could have done that. This one had a few ridges in it that were a little bit more stubborn, but a lot of times you can just kind of get away with the, the starting with the this Zona paper. Um, so you might give that a shot and see if that works. That'll save you a step, you know? And also, the, you know, the higher you can start, the less chance you're going to have of sanding through the finish. So, you know, if you can get away with it, then why not? Speaking about the foaming up, a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people kind of complain about that with accelerators and CA glues. And I just, I've never seen that even happen here. And I'm wondering if it just has to do with the humidity level, the ambient humidity, and then you add that stuff to it. Um, because it just, I don't think I've ever seen a CA glue foam up on me. But, you know, it's really dry in Nevada, so it might be kind of the reason why that I haven't really seen that. So if you're in a humid area, you might be might be a little bit more cautious about your accelerators. Um, the mercury is not going to foam up or do anything. It's not 
it's meant to work with the the finishes for sure without causing any issues so um, if you're using the thin flex or medium flex the accelerator will have no effect like that on no matter where you're at um, and I, I just find that accelerator to be kind of mild anyway milder than other ones um, and so I don't think that you really should have a problem with other you know like the stand your standard non thin or I mean the non flex versions you, sh you still shouldn't really have any issues with that I don't think all right so let's wipe this guy off and then we'll move on to our magic juice and again we're gonna do a little experiment I just I, I'm finding that I, you know I get through the first three steps of magic juice and I don't see a whole lot more happening after that <laughs> on the next three steps and so I, I thought let's just just try it out we'll just go one one through three um, and there's no you know it's not like it takes much longer to go four five six I'm just doing a little experiment um, but you may find like if you want to save a little bit of time it, it may not really be necessary <laughs> you know to go through all through all six steps We're just going to take a look and see how this pen turns out after just doing the three. See what we think. All right, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, I'll just get this wiped on here. Crank it up to about 2,000 RPMs, somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000. Light, you know, moderate pressure, let's say. I don't know if light is the word, but moderate. You don't really want to be pressing. It's not a friction polish, you know. You just want to let it, let the particles, let the abrasive do its work. For, you know, 15 seconds or so, maybe. And I just find a fresh sheet, part of the sheet, and then wipe it off. Step one, and again, after step one, I mean, this is a pretty good pen. This is better than some people's like actual every step <laughs> finish. <laughs> That's just after one step of this stuff, so. Not too shabby. Yeah, I I think I've seen people have it foam. I've just I've never had it. Um I've never experienced it myself. All right. So I'm going to put with step 2, this stuff seems to be a little bit stickier when it kind of dries out a little bit on there. So I'm going to apply just a little bit more pressure so I don't wrap up the paper towel hopefully again. There we go. All right, step two. And step three. All right. Again, I'm not advocating only stop like stopping it at number three, but at the same time, I'm not sure that you have to go to six. That's all. We're just doing an experiment here. Seeing what we can find out. But I mean, that's that's pretty darn polished. Glossy. All right, so I'm gonna get the bushings off here. This bushing's a little bit sticky on this end. This is what I do. We did put quite a bit of CA glue. Just 
tap it a little bit and a lot of times it'll break loose. Now, if you're globbing a ton of it on, this may not work and, and you may want to switch to a mandrel and the, the plastic, um, you know, the plastic bushing, finish bushings. Um, that might be a smarter way so that you don't get your glue just, or your bushings super glued, you know, to the point where you gotta like cut them off. Um, but if you're only applying kind of thinner coats, then you, you can get away with this and, and it's not really a big deal. I don't, you know, I don't really glue bushings on. Now, if it's, if it's a blank where you gotta do a lot of filling, you know, or it's very porous or something like that, that's a case where, you know, you, you gotta put a lot of glue on and there's more chance of it gluing the, the you know, the bushings to the blank. And this is just to knock off the ends if there's any excess um, you know, CA glue <laughs> overhanging the end uh, when you press it together, when, when you know, the parts, the, when you put your, your pen parts together pressing them, um, if there's glue hanging off the end there, you can crack your finish, which is not fun. And you got to take it all apart again, <laughs> reapply the finish. <laughs> so, yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, time to assemble. Avengers, assemble. All right, so let me get my little assembly stuff ready here. And again, I don't, I, I don't know exactly what pen kit this is, but it's a junior variant, one of the juniors. Junior something. And uh, uh, Turner's Warehouse has tons of them. I, I couldn't necessarily pick it out of a lineup on their website, so I'm not sure which one it is, but... <clears throat> Turner's has all kinds of juniors. All right, so let's switch to the Sony cam. Oh, uh, do they? The yeah. <laughs> Ask me no. <laughs> I don't like. Well, my problem is those things are like. The reason I just, well, it's much simpler just to leave the bushings on, but I have some of those bushings. But my problem with them is this. They're, they're like conical, right? And, they, and so, and a lot of times, like, I don't make flat, even if this was flat. Mine's a little bit, my blanks are a lot, oftentimes a little curved. But even, even if it was flat, the problem I have is the way that I apply the, the, the finish is I, it, I run into the bushing. And yeah, I could turn that down and, and mess around, but what I would rather have is a Sierra, Sierra or you know whatever, whatever uh, blank it is, um, I would rather have just a real bushing, you know, the same shape as the other ones. It just fits, you know, fits like a, you know, it's flat, it's not a cone. And I, and I get it, these are meant to be used with lots of different things, but I'd much rather, I would buy a set of, of like, you know, Delrin bushings or, or HDPE that were like the right size, you know, for, for different pen kits and stuff. So it just, it screws up my, when I apply the finish, it, it screws it up royally. Um, there's ridges all over the place. I don't get finish on the ends. And so I just, I can't stand those things. <clears throat> personally um, other people use them and, and don't have <laughs> the problems that I do I don't think but I didn't know you could glue yeah I guess you if you put enough on there I guess it'll glue it yeah acetone <laughs> all right so we got an overhead view here let's see I'm putting gloves on I like to put gloves on when I get to this point so I'm not getting fingerprints and junk all over my uh all over the blanks. Okay. And so let me go and pull that, that piece. I have a, uh, actually. So th again, this, is, this was a fountain pen kit, but 
um, you can just swap out. And actually, Turner's Warehouse sells components and different stuff, so you might be able to find if you don't have another kit. But this is a, a Junior Herald kit, a different kit, um, you know, but it's chrome. And all you got to do if you wanted to do a rollerball instead is just swap out the nib section. That, that's the only part, and, and they're all interchangeable with the Junior um, variants. So, um, just kind of wanted to let you guys know that if you know if you buy a fountain pen kit that's a, a junior series, one of them, um, you could find you know a, a chrome rollerball nib and swap them out if you wanted if you wanted a rollerball instead of a fountain or the other way. Okay, so let's see here, and these don't really fully line up. So I'm not I'm not particularly worried about how these go. I think what I'm going to do, yeah, I, it doesn't it, it just doesn't line up. The way I cut these didn't really work out. It wasn't, and there there was actually it wasn't the way I cut them. It's just there was random chunks in this blank. So I think we're going to do it this way. I think I like that. Let's see. Actually, the way that I did this, I think it actually works this way. Hmm. Let me let me look at something. Maybe not. Okay. It's gonna it's gonna be like that. I like this. I think. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna put this piece in here. Figured out there. And then, and again, it I, there's not like grain. I don't really care necessarily how this ends up, so I'm not even gonna like line it up. We're just gonna let chance dictate how this turns out because I don't think it's really going to make much difference um, how, how things are actually lined up in the end <clears throat> which makes things nice you don't have to really worry about that stuff Okay, now let's see how this ends up. So actually that lined up pretty good. Letting Chance do its work. I think I kind of like this. I, I really like this little swoopy area. I think I want to put the cap to where you can kind of see this. Yeah, I like that. Where'd my swoopy area go? I want to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay, there's the swoop. Oh, I'm losing parts. Just need to get this thing started so that I can kind of play with it. Okay, there's the swoop. Oh, I got my glove. <laughs> We're okay. All right. Woo! That is pretty fancy, guys. Oh, wrong way. Wow. Camera's all backwards, so sorry. I'm like trying to get on. 
get it centered. That's pretty nice. What do you guys think about that? I really like this little swoopy, swoopy area with the, the, the mic is there. I like that. And so again, all, all you got to do to convert this to a roller ball is just unscrew this nib section. And uh, what did I do with the, where did I put the thing? Hmm. I don't know what I did with the other one. All right, put it back. <clears throat> Let's see what it looks like as a roller ball here. There we go. Not too bad. It's pretty galactic, I'd say. A lot like my nebula blank, just bright, like more, you can see the colors more. Nice. Nice. I'm digging it. Let's see what you guys have to say about it. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, chip, uh, chipping out. A lot of times, if, if I do get my bush, sometimes I get my bushings flat stuck. Like there's like a layer of glue over the bushing in the, the blank. And what, what I'll do is just take, uh, you could either take a detail tool, um, you know, one of the diamond ones, I would, you, you really want to find, you know, like the super pointy one though, like that comes to like a, a razor point. Like this is the CI seven. I don't know what num what name <laughs> of easy wood tool this is, but it's got the really like the longer and, and sharper pointed um, detail. Um, you can just come in and just, you know, try to just get right between um, that, that bushing and, and just kind of cut it and, and that works. The other way to go, and this is the way I usually do it, is just use a skew, come in with the point and just, you know, you could even use like a, a knife um, and just try to kind of get it right there. You want a really fine blade and try and nail it right between the two, you know, pieces and it, you can cut it off and, and it doesn't, it's not going to harm anything, you know, um, if you can get it done right. If for some reason the blade wo wobbles or does something to your finish, then you're kind of screwed. But you can usually take a, a tool and, and get it, you know, kind of parted off, basically. Um, the colors are Yamagata Red. Uh, and I think Royal Purple. Uh, actually, I have it written down. Hold on. That's why I have a notebook. <laughs> Yamagata Red, Royal Purple. So Yamagata is an eye candy. Royal Purple is a, a P-Town Subby. That camera sucks. P-Town Subby, <laughs> you can get that at Turner's Warehouse, both of them. And then uh, Silver Gray from P-Town Subby also. Which silver, this is one of my favorite silvers now. Um, I, I really, so when I got these, I got a, they sent me a full set, uh, uh, Fred did. And... Uh, I'm looking at the jar. Okay, so let's let's get an overhead view. I didn't open it at first, and I was looking at just the outside of the jar. It's kind of hard on the side here, but it looked really dark. I was like, well, that's kind of sort of silver. I don't know. Then I opened it finally, and it's like silver. Like it's a good silver. So this is kind of my favorite. Um, it, it man, there's a bunch of powder on the lid or something. It keeps blowing out everywhere um it reminds me of <laughs> it actually reminds me for for the folks that have been around the live stream since twitch it reminds me of the yakinum it's very similar to the alumilite pewter which was like at that point that was my favorite silver now the alumilite had like a silver met metallic thing um, but they don't even sell that anymore. So 
Um, it's a very good silver if you want to, uh, if you're looking for one. That's a, it's, I was pretty happy and I, it, it's, it made me mad because I, like, I didn't even open it because I'm just looking through the side of it and I'm like, oh, that's too dark. It's like kind of gray, but it's a pretty good silver. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, I, I think that the, yeah, the, the chrome and the silver and all that, it, it's pretty, pretty nice. I, I do think that I like the looks of the fountain pen a little bit better, so I don't know. <laughs> Cooper, what's up? Long dinner with the family. Did you see the pen? Oh, man. I don't know if you're into fountain pens or not, but we can do rollerball too with this one, but I think you might like this one. So I'm going to put it in fountain pen mode. You can you can swap out the, the little section part. So it could either be a fountain or a rollerball. We'll go with the overhead. Check this out. What? Nope, it's hard to center this, it's all backwards. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And you can switch out, it could either be a rollerball or a fountain. You just get rid of the fountain nib part and put the rollerball in. But man, pretty happy with this. This one was a little, it fought me a little bit. There was a little bit of sketchiness going on, but we, we got through it, didn't we guys? CA glue to the rescue. That's my theme. I really need to be sponsored by a CA glue company. <laughs> it is like my favorite thing on the planet. Like it literally will save you from anything. So I need to, I need to contact Mercury, I think. Maybe Starbond, who knows? So. I know what to do. Do you want, so do you like the fountain? Do you use fountain pens? Uh, it has the uh, you can do either way, but it's got, you know, like the plunger thing. I don't know if you're into those. I don't really use fountain pens, but it's got the, or you, you fill it up in this thing. Um, I mean, I can go probably either way if you wanted both. Uh, but if you want rollerball, it's, it's, all I got to do is drop a spring in this guy in the bottom. I don't think it has one. Yeah. Swap it out, get the spring in there, and it can be a rollerball all day can't get the thing in oh actually one thing that i forgot to show you guys um because it wasn't really very squeaky um one thing that you want to do on your pens is uh let me go get you want to grab a little piece a little bit of wax i really need to get a new jar Um, the those so the bottom part i'm going to put this close i'm putting this close to my mic this thing, <laughs> they always squeak. So these, these components, this one is actually, surprisingly, that one doesn't really squeak, but um, you always want to grab some wax. And, and I, as far as I can tell, I, I, I only apply this stuff once and that's, that's it. Like it's good for life. I've, I've never seen one that needed a reapplication. Um, but I'm just going to take, this is just Renaissance wax. It doesn't matter what you use. Honestly, I've actually, forgotten to, to do this in the shop and at home I'm, I'm putting together you know like an order for a pen and uh i've actually taken a candle um and to do this um, but i just i just add a little bit to the the threads on you know whatever end and then that's just going to make sure that that thing doesn't squeak that would just be that would annoy the heck out of me if i got a pen and it squeaked like that <laughs> I paid for a pen and then somebody sent it to me and it squeaks. So if you're selling pens, even if you're giving them away for gifts, you know, it's just, you don't want to have a squeaky pen. Oh, let me get on camera. I'm just applying it with a little paper towel. It's just any kind of paste wax. One time ought to do. Screw it in and it's not going to squeak anymore. So I just wanted to make sure that for anybody that's kind of new to pen turning, you hadn't seen that. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I I'm I'm on the fence because I I like I like the idea of fountain. Like it sounds all ro you know, it's like a like this 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 romantic idea. I've got a fountain pen and I'm all you know, 
But I'm like, I don't want to be like pulling ink out of a thing and doing, uh, it just doesn't sound fun to me. I'm not that kind of guy. Yeah, check out the video. We, we, uh, <laughs> these honeycomb blanks were just, I think my, bl I think because my, my table saw blade was pretty dull, I was cutting them and they were like, they were chipping and stuff. And I was like, oh man. These guys might be a little bit difficult. So I, I doused the heck out of them with CA glue before, like right after I cut them. And then we did a lot of dousing of CA. The first blank went good. The second one got a little sketchy. We had some parts. We were gluing things back together. Uh, but we made it through in the end. Um, and it was good to kind of show, you know, what happens when with honeycomb blanks. It, they can be difficult sometimes. Like even mine, you know, I went through and did all this testing and found, you know, what, what was what I found was the best honeycomb. It's still not a good bond. You know, I'm not saying that you're not gonna have problems if you buy the honeycomb that I sell. It's just, it's the best out of the stuff that I tried. Uh, and it was pretty good, but you know, you, you could run into problems turning this stuff. Um, it's just not a good bond, no matter what you do to it. Um, but there's ways to, to mitigate, you know, the risk of things kind of chipping out and there's ways to fix them. Um, you know, we did have a chip out on the, the body part um, but you know, it's uh, one one part of it we could just kind of glue back in. Um, if you can find the little piece that comes out, just stick it back on there and glue it. Try not to glue it to your fingers and put it in upside down like I did the first time. <laughs> but you can get around it and fix the problem. It's good. Yeah, it seems like a mess. I'm just too in a in a hurry for fountain pens. If I was like, if I was somebody who was like a writer and like, you know, I had a desk and I wrote things a lot and I had my little ink well, I don't even have a desk at home. Like when I'm doing shipping, it's on my kitchen table. So like, I don't really want a, an open ink thing on our kitchen, you know, dinner table thing. It's just not a, fountain pens have never been my thing. But I, I do love the looks of, especially the, the custom made ones, like the fully handmade bespoke or, or kitless um, ones. I love the looks of those. They look, uh, you know, just amazing. So, anyway, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this thing come together. And for the, the subscription box, folks, we got some blanks. Some, uh, you know, we got five of the, the same one and then a couple of these. And if you didn't see this, the it looked like the 14 karat nugget kind of sank to the bottom a little bit. So just be aware of that. You might want to wait, uh, you know, go to a little bit higher temperature if you're mixing in the 14 karat and trying to do swirls like multiple colors. Um, I think it probably requires a little bit higher temperature before you pour it and mix it. But I think there's still, I can still see some gold chunks strewn about in there. So I think we still got some stuff going on. Uh, but we cast these on last week's live stream. If you didn't see that and want to see these things uh, being poured and, and cast, you can check that out. And then again, uh, there's links down in the description, but for the folks that are watching um, in the chat here, if you want to pick up some un uh, aluminum honeycomb, I sell it on my website. We got two size well it used to have three sizes we got two size there might be there may maybe a couple panels of the one eighth inch cell but i had to discontinue that because it was just too expensive um, to keep uh, ordering that stuff but we got quarter inch cell and two inch thickness for like you know handle blanks or stoppers and then uh, uh quarter inch and seven eighths thickness for pen blanks and things like that so your shipping department is the kitchen table too. Yeah, I I could do it here, but it would take away from shop duties. So it kind of works where I can do sh the making stuff here, and then I do the shipping at home, like late at night, at like you know ten o'clock at night. So um, let's see. Is there anything else that I need to mention? Um, I don't think so. Uh, there will be a video coming out next week. It's just a really short one. I don't think I'm going to do a, a um, uh, what are they called, a premiere. It, it's just kind of a quick tips video, and, and most of the folks that uh, do the live streams and come out for the, um, like the, what are they called? I just lost it. I've been streaming for over two hours. My brain's gone. <laughs> but um, uh, the the premieres. Um, I, it's going to be a really quick one, and I think a lot of you guys have already seen the topic. It's going to be on uh, heating up resin to thin it, you know, thin the viscosity. So be looking for that. It'll probably come out. Um, I don't know. I might just drop it on Wednesday afternoon, like I was doing before. Um, so be looking for that. Um, if you do have thick resin, or you know, especially with colder temperatures, resins, all of them, kind of thicken up a little bit more. 
Um, and so heat is an easy way to, 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 to you know, thin it out. But uh, a lot of people kind of recommend using like boiling water pots or th weird stuff. And I got a way better way to do it. So if you haven't seen that or heard about how I do it, uh, be looking for that video. It's coming next week. And I think that's about it, guys. So next week, we're going to be doing back to... So it's going to be, like I said, flip-flop schedule with the live streams where we do... You know, it's going to be every Saturday. So actually, I, I didn't mention this at the beginning. Saturdays at 2 p.m. is going to be when we do live streams from now on, all right? And it's But it's going to be the flip-flop where one week we do resin casting, and then we're going to turn the blanks from the week before um, on the next one. So uh, I got some really cool things... Um, I came up with some good ideas. Let's see. Yeah, I actually I don't have anything that I can show you. But um, next week's uh, dunk, it's going to be like a Dunkin' Junk style thing. I think you guys are really going to like it. I, I found some really cool stuff to drop in resin. So uh, make sure to come back out 2 p.m. Pacific time. <coughs> I almost choked on my own. Ah, I'm dying here. <coughs> okay. Anyway, I hope you guys all have a wonderful evening. Thank you guys all for joining the fun tonight. And I think that's about it. So I will see you guys all on next Saturday's stream. Again, 2 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure to come out and we'll do some Dunkin' Junk. It'll be pretty fun. So have a great night, guys. I'll see you on the next stream.